So today I'm going to talk about MOBEX. Uh, when my friends asked me what my topic is for Tech Talk, I said it's something similar to Redux. Uh, MOBEX is a state management li library. And honestly, I think none of the people who asked me that question was interested in. They all said, you know, can you cover it in 10 minutes? I think it's too complex or not interesting. So I'll try to keep this very simple and I'll touch on the highlights. Uh, so let's get started. So this is just my brief overview. Uh, so this is a snapshot of uh, MOBEX. Uh, I think there are four highlights of uh, Mo what MOBEX is. So it's a simple, scalable state management library. And for a second, it's uh, influenced by object-oriented oriented and uh, reactive programming principles. And third, uh, the state can be mutable. And lastly, uh, people find it gener uh, generally less code and quick to learn this uh, practice. So in the middle, you see the cycle of how MOVEX works. Uh, I'll get back to this cycle later. So um, yeah. So before jumping on to uh, MOVEX, we have to know two syntactic sugars. First one is get, and second one is decorators. Get is, uh, I think many of us are already familiar, but I'll just go over it all again. Uh, it's a syntax that binds uh, an object property to a function that will be called. Uh, it generally does two things. It lets you have direct access to pseudo property that returns a dynamically computed value. And it also reflects the internal variable without using explicit method calls. So if you see this example here, I have the two same class person. And on the first one, it doesn't have get getter, ES6 getter, uh, and the second one has. If you see what it, this uh, console logs, uh, you have to call the function explicitly down here to get the uppercase Jordan, while uh, second version of this code, uh, you just uh, console log me that name, and it will return the uppercase Jordan. So the second one is more, uh, I guess, new and f interesting uh, sugar. Is uh, in ES7, that uh, node doesn't have support yet, but I think it'll be implemented within a few months. So basically, decorators are higher order function that has extra feature to enclose class or method. So in this example, I have this read-only decorator uh, written here. So what it does is the engine will invoke descriptor and descriptor has this property called writable. And what this read-only uh, decorator does is it's going to make that writable property as false. So when we add this read-only decorator uh, by adding at, and before the uh, variable you want to enclose, it's going to render this variable as read-only as a result. So if you see the comment here, uh, when we make a new instance of meal as dinner and we try to set dinner entree as salmon, it'll, you know, we cannot assign this property because it's already set as read-only by this read-only decorator. Uh, so I think it's a cool concept to uh, find in ES7. And we're going to use this uh, design often in uh, MOVEX. So let's jump. So I'm going to have a simple walkthrough of MOBEX right now. So you know, I, I say I'm going to make this very simple. So I just have ABCs. Uh, learn your ABCs here. So these are co co course concepts. First one, observable state. Second, computed values. And last, uh, reactive component. There are. Uh, you can use markdowns, at observable, at computed, at observer to use these concepts here. And I guess uh, these are very straightforward in terms. But I want to bring a metaphor here. You can think of uh, these MOVEX decorators as um, what you'd find in Excel or spreadsheets. 
So for the observable state, you can think of it as a cell that contains uh, data or multiple cells that has uh, some kind of values in a row. And you can think of computed values at, or at computed almost as a formula that, uh, that computes uh, dynamic values and returns a new value according to observed observable state. And for the last one, uh, C is a wrapper around the React component. So I'll explain it uh, later. So I have two code examples. This first one is playing Mobex right now. I have this uh, class called to do list. It's just uh, basically a list of to do's. I'm going to start in the middle. If you see, to do's is a state. And we mark that to do state as at observable here. And we have the second uh, part here, which is get unfinished to-do counts. It just returns you how many to-dos you didn't get to finish. And it's marked as at computed. And in the constructor, you'll see it has something called auto run. Uh, what this does is that uh, the provided function in the inside the auto run uh, will be triggered once immediately and every time when its dependencies cha have changes. So if you see this auto run inside, there is a unfinished to do count, which is marked as at computer, right? So uh, whenever there is a change into a computed, or like it's, this, its dependencies in general, uh, it's going to re-render and uh, run, the, run it automatically, the changes. So then the last part is just add to do, normal function to push in into the state. So if you see, I make a new instance of to-do list, and I add to-do, clean my room, for first task in the to-do state. It's going to automatically log number of unfinished is one. And if I add a second one, it will say two. And if I mark the first to-do as true, it's going to log the number of unfinished to-do is one, just, just automatically. And Second example I'm going to show is Mobex React. So what Ad Observer does is it wraps the entire React component under Mobex uh, auto run. So it's going to re-render upon change. And that change means a change in observable variable. So it's, if you see this very simple A component uh, that makes a click only once happening in this uh, component as a whole, uh, you see, uh, I think it's very straightforward. Uh, everyone can understand. I even put comment on it. Um, yeah, so these are uh, how MoveX just generally work in a, in a React component, I guess. So, you know, MoveX, uh, it can be used independently, but often it's paired with React. So we always have to think about the comparisons between MobX and Redux. Uh, so let's first compare them by the facts. Uh, the principle-wise, MobX is based on OOP, and uh, Redux is functional programming. And MobX generally has uh, multiple stores. So each component might have, or generally have, one store in each component. And Redux, Redux is a single source of truth. Uh, for object, uh, Oftentimes, um, objects in MobX are observable, while Redux is just a plain object. And for the state, we have direct access to the state. So we can uh, not only write it, uh, not only read it, and then we can also write it, while Redux is e uh, more immutable. And the components in MobX are smart, and while Redux has distinction between smart and dumb components, uh, and so on. So actions not required, required. Updates are very reactive, and Redux is more passive. So these are not the facts, but people will generally agree that MobX is easier to learn. It's uh, very simple, uh, easy to pick up, and there's very rapid prototyping. So if it's a small uh, startup or small team for the project, it might be a better fit. And it's very modular. It's based on uh, object-oriented programming and uh, better at encapsulating data. Um, and so people 
some say that it's fit, really fit for uh, real-time system applications because it's very reactive to, reactive to changes. Uh, and on the other hand, Redux has a lot bigger community. Like on the GitHub, uh, I think active repos or like stars, there are at least three times more uh, Redux only uh, repos than MobX. And Redux is more predictable and easier to debug because we have strict order of uh, update logic. And therefore, it's, going, it's very fit for the action or event-based or triggered system applications. So if we go back to think about the birth of Redux, you know, I think uh, if we recall, it was uh, born after a uh, flux design pattern to solve problems rising from cross-domain components. When the applicants, application gets really, really big, and there are like 50 or like even 100 components, it's really hard to manage the state. That's how Redux is born. And as I explained earlier, MoveX has a you know, modular multiple stores, so it might be uh, final obstacles in uh, shared state management. Uh, so is there no future to MoveX, or why did I even bring it up? Uh, does it have no value? Uh, I would say no, because uh, I really like this quote from the, one of the videos I watched. Uh, so like the speaker from the React conference this year said, uh, for the most part in software engineering, everything is based on opinions and trade-offs, uh, not based on facts or hard truths. Um, like if we say, you know, even if MobX becomes extinct uh, two, three years from now, we still learn from the pattern and comparing these different design models. And we might even come up with a better uh, design pattern to manage states. Uh, so I feel like you know, this kind of uh, tries and attempts make us better software engineers. And you know, you know, we never know. Redux might be even gone in three, five years from now. So uh, I think it's a good practice to give a try. Uh, thank you. Yeah.